G'day, my name is Mark and I do not have $30,000 worth of tools. I work with recycled timber and I mostly use pallets. I use lots and lots and lots of pallets. I'm over here. One day I decided I wanted to give woodworking a bit of a go. That was about five years ago, I decided I'll go find some pallets, I'll pull them apart and I'll see if I actually like this. The reason I use pallets is because they are free and they're literally laying around everywhere. So free, I think, is the most accessible type of timber to get in and have a go. All I had in this shed was a couple of basic power tools, a couple of Ryobi's 20 years old. So I kicked it off with a pry bar and a mallet and went to work pulling apart pallets. Pulling apart pallets is time consuming, getting all the nails out. If you're approaching this as a hobby or thinking about a side hustle, if you're happy to put in the time to learn with pallets and not expect to get that time back in profit initially, pallets are the way to go. As a thumbnail suggests, I wanna give you my backstory um, and how I built up this shed. Let's go back five years. I decided I'm just gonna try and build a basic workbench that'll let me know if I sort of like this before I start spending any money. Obviously working with pallet wood, there is only so much you can do with the stock that you get. A lot of thin strip palings and some thicker stretches straight if you're lucky. Now because I wanted to build a chunky workbench, I'm going to need to join all this timber together somehow to make up a nice chunky beam. I denailed, hand planed off some of the timber glued it together with very ordinary PVA glue, clamped it up and then I planed off that side and then fell in love with pallet wood, side grain, furniture. My very early builds, I thought I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a basic coffee table, learn a few things. When I finished this coffee table, I decided someone might wanna buy that. I threw that thing on Facebook Marketplace for $90 and it sold in the first hour. I better build something else. Went through that same routine again, roughly cleaning up the timber, gluing it together, flattening it off with a electric hand plane to come up with those sort of unique pallet wood slabs. I then knocked up a hallway table, this. Again, I threw that one on Marketplace, 120 bucks. I had about 20 people send me a message, is this still available? Yes, it is. And then 19, uh, no, sorry, it's not. So what I then did, was I made two more hallway tables. I then messaged all those people who were interested. I sold those two tables, again, for just $120. I then messaged the rest of the people and said, I'm happy to make these. This is a hobby, it will take me some time. If you'd like one, let me know. And we went from there. So I started making lots of hallway tables. I slowly increased the price. It was starting to feel like I was working a lot for not much money, but at the time, that was fine. I was learning woodworking, and I was making cash, which I could then buy the next thing to help me make that table a little bit more efficient. Now, why hallway tables? It's that one piece of furniture that doesn't have to be structurally amazing. It is literally going to sit there at the end of the hallway or somewhere else in the house. It'll have a few ornaments, photo frames, that sort of stuff. People just want something to fill the space. These hallway table, occasional tables, were very, very popular. So from there, I started to treat this thing more like a side hustle. I was very much selling cheap furniture new to woodworking, still learning, trying to get better on each table. Each time I'd make something, I'd sell something. I would save the cash. I'd spend some of it on whatever, save the cash, buy a new tool, start to make things easier for me in the shed for almost pumping as many of these things out. I definitely don't have $30,000 worth of tools. I've now built up a decent selection of good tools that help me get the job done. I was about 80 pieces of furniture in before I bought the thicknesser. So all of those slabs I would hand flatten with a router and a basic sled that I knocked up out of pallets. And it let me use those slabs, sand them off, clean them up, stick them into the piece of furniture, sell them, go again. Working with pallets, one of the biggest issues when you don't have many tools is getting things square. Hence the slogan. Early on I had a lot of shockers um, most stuff I did was eyeball square, the timber that is. Um, 
looking down and thinking that piece is probably going to be okay to make some framework all the other stuff that went into the slabs that didn't matter it was going to be clamped together and cleaned off so the clamps would sort out all those wonky donkeys making all that furniture going through literally hundreds of pallets i pretty much knew early on i need to save up first to get a table saw table saw was going to be the most versatile piece of kit and allow me to rip and resaw as much of this timber in the shortest amount of time uh, again because all this pallet wood is always wonky as a donkey you then need to start making yourself some jigs so you've got yourself a straight edge so you can start putting your first straight edge on your pallet slats there's a million ways you can do that these are just a couple of my my sleds that I've had over the years. If you do stick around till the end of the video, I'm just gonna tack on a very simple jig. I don't actually have one yet. I'm gonna make it out of these pallets. Um, this jig will get you started without a table saw, without a thicknesser. It'll at least let you get your first straight edge. You can start gluing pallets together, cleaning them off and getting into the game. So the plan for all this pallet wood will, for the next few videos will be to start to do another few big projects. I want to show as much as I can again now and hopefully with some more skills and knowledge to pass on. Of the six pallets I've got here, this is the only pine pallet. Probably the biggest comment I've got over the years, I can only find pine pallets. The simple answer is you just need to keep driving past. Now I don't have a magical stockpile of pallets. During my peak of picking up hundreds of pallets, I would literally drive past two Bunnings nearly every day on the way to work and just have a quick look through the pile and start to hand select anything that had nice color. Don't discount these pine pallets. Look at the thickness of these. There's some 25 mil thick slats and some very big stretches. I use this stuff heaps, uh, especially to make up basic frames uh, and legs for those hallway tables. This stuff will still clean up nicely, but what you can also do is clean it up and paint it. Save the feature for the top or whatever you want to do. The other great thing about pine is it is not rough on your tools. It's easy to cut, it's easy to clean up. You're not gonna go through blades. There's thousands of these things lying around. If you make an error, you just go and get another one. Everyone's favorite part, banging out nails. We're gonna save these. Do you wanna know the easiest way to get the nails out? Should we give him the gun? So this is what my first slabs look like. This would be the underside, as you can see all the different widths of timber. And then we'd have the good side. This is the side that I would flatten off with the router. Now initially, all I had was a heap of cheap and nasty little F clamps. I could only clamp together about four or five slats of pallet wood. I would clean those off, I would then join them together before I even have a router slip. That was very much the hard way. I would hand plane off that first edge to get my very first pieces of timber. So to get in the game of flattening, find yourself a piece of scrap board, find yourself a pine pallet and try and get two perfectly straight pieces. Screw those on and you got yourself your base frame for your router slip. I made a few of these um, router sleds initially, but what I found is just getting some angled steel keeps this profile as low as possible. You'll probably find that getting the depth you need to get through some of those uneven surfaces will be one of those stumbling blocks. So reducing that thickness there, rather than a thick piece of ply, uh, you can save yourself a little bit of depth. This angled steel is very cheap from a steel store and very easy to make. I did a lot of hours with this thing. My advice there are thousands of parts lying around. There is not thousands of nice colored timber pallets lying around. Doing it this way will get you started. However, we can double our stock from this pile here. You should be able to get two slats out of each pallet board. Maybe even three, depending on how thick you're going to go. So I would suggest making the jig that I'm gonna to put together at the end of this video. Start ripping every beautiful piece of pallet wood into two, double your stock, save pulling apart an extra couple of hundred pounds. 
when I got started, I did not do much to the pallet wood at all. Um, if it was a little bit rough, I would just hit it with the belt sander just to clean it up a little bit. I would then just rely on lots of glue and I would clamp the life out of it. Now, I knew the PVA glue wasn't that great and I knew my gluing surfaces and bonds were not that great either. However, I would not rely on this gluing as any sort of structural. This was all about making a big chunk of wood, making it look cool with all the beautiful colors. However, I would build the structure into the project some other way to support the slab base. Okay, so from here, I've got six pallets busted apart. I'm gonna put a straight edge on every single piece. I'm going to use my straightening jigs that work with the table saw. I'm then gonna clean all the timber up. I now use a thicknesser and every, every piece goes through the thicknesser, both sides. I get a beautifully planed surface. A beautiful gluing surface. Check this out. Although I've just mocked this up for the thumbnail, this looks very much like day one gluing pallets together. I had old broken clamps, ratchet straps, pretty much $2 F clamps from the cheapy store and craft PVA glue hissing out everywhere. That helps you get you started. That helps you sell your first piece of furniture, make some cash, start to upgrade do things a little bit smarter, a little bit better, with some better quality stuff. So in essence, this is what this video is all about. Just get started, get addicted, you'll love it, you'll make some cash, you can build your little workshop, build your little side hustle, and it pays for itself. So good for the brain, so good for the inside. Alrighty, quick channel shout out to Jesper Makes. Now Jesper mentioned me in one of his videos. Video went bananas. Lots of people came over, subscribed to me. Thank you very much. So I just want to return the favor to you. So go find his video where the thumbnail looks a little something like this. Check it out. 1.5 million people can't be wrong. So stick with me. We'll do a little sped up montage. Check out all this cool color. All these pallet slats are now 40 millimeters wide. I've got color variation, I've got thickness variation. I've got reasonably usable timber. Clamp those together, you've got yourself a nice, beautiful slab top. This is as far as I'm gonna take this timber in this video. The next series of videos is gonna be using all of this timber to start to make some furniture and other bits and pieces. So if you want to stay tuned, see what I do with this, please subscribe, like this video, help it get going. Um, but the biggest thing you can do to help me out is actually watch the video. It is the number one thing that helps any channel grow. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Thanks very much to everyone that's been with me from the start. So hopefully you'll get some tips out of this, but the biggest message I've got is just get started. It is so much fun and these will pay for your workshop in no time at all. Okay, see you later.